fire. In your lifetime, you have a one in four chance of experiencing a fire serious enough to call 911 for help. Everyone takes comfort in knowing that when we need help, someone will answer the call. But who is that someone? Fire control for Pollock, West Pollock, Rupert, Dorset, Mutilate, Pollock. Reporting a structure fire, 155 Church Street. Call a reporting flames and smoke inside the residence. Evacuation in progress. Flame is 0235 hours. Who is that someone? If you live in the same town that I do, that someone is me. I'm an animator, and I'm also a volunteer firefighter. When there's an emergency, a dispatcher pages a group of volunteers, and we drop what we're doing and we go. This is how it's done in most of America. 70% of all firefighters in this country are volunteers. Smaller communities are especially reliant on volunteers. In communities of under 25,000 people, 95% of the firefighters that serve them are volunteers. In communities of under 2,500, 99.5% of the firefighters are volunteers. Relying on volunteers for fire protection is an American tradition that dates back to colonial times. Washington, Franklin, Jefferson, all volunteer firefighters. Today, volunteer firefighters save taxpayers $139 billion a year every year. But this isn't a sure thing. In the last 30 years, the ranks of volunteer firefighters have shrunk by 11%. In that same span of time, the number of calls for the fire department has nearly tripled, from 12 to 32 million. Training requirements for volunteer firefighters have increased too. Members who joined my department back in the 90s took a 70-hour basic training class. But today, firefighters train to fight fires that burn hotter and move faster than ever before in our plastic-laden homes, and to deliver an ever-expanding range of emergency services. Basic firefighter training has grown to a staggering 184 hours. That's more than most Americans with full-time jobs work in a month. On top of the calls and the training, there's fundraising. The cost of firefighting equipment can be dumbfounding. The protective garments I wear to every call cost my department over $3,000. An air pack costs around seven grand. A radio costs 500 bucks. Just the hose on a fire engine can cost $15,000. The engine itself? Upwards of a quarter million dollars today. A ladder truck can cost three times that. Trying to raise this kind of money with pancake breakfasts, boot drops, and bingo nights seems crazy. Yet this is the norm for America's volunteer fire departments. And the volunteers making all those pancakes are the very same ones going to all those calls and doing all that training. This all adds up to a very big ask. And we're asking it in a society where barely half of us control our schedules. And only 24% of kids have a stay-at-home parent to look after them at a moment's notice when the pager goes off. It would seem like doing the job would be the biggest ask of all. But remarkably, responding to emergencies is something volunteer firefighters never seem to mind. As I talk with other firefighters, no one complains about getting pulled out of bed on the coldest night of the winter. No one minds putting in a hard turn of dirty, sometimes dangerous work, all to help out a neighbor who you might not even know. To us, this is what being a volunteer is all about. In spite of the challenges, volunteer fire departments fill a critical role in many of our towns, and they also knit these communities together in a unique way. The fire might be at your house, but to us, it's not your fire, it's all of ours. A challenge to be faced together as a community. For the firefighters, this bond can change everything. It's hard to feel isolated when you're part of a group of people willing to make real sacrifices to help out their neighbors when the call goes out. None of this can happen without your support. So how about you? Will you answer the call?